son and I stand in the care of our children this morning. Spirit of the living God, this is the attacks that have been risen up against our children. This morning, Holy Ghost, we're asking you to take charge. We're asking you to destroy the plans of the enemy. Many of our children have gone to the grave, oh God, prematurely. Their time wasn't yet. The enemy has used, oh God, weapons to destroy our children. Red, oh God, took their lives saying it's sacrifice. This morning, the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, seven memorial uh, brothers and sisters, we are declaring in the atmosphere, God, that our children will rise up and they will praise you. They will live a life of righteousness. They will stand holy and stand, oh God, set apart for you, Jesus. This morning, in the name of Jesus, we put on the pressure on the enemy. And we say, devil, you're a liar. I declare that your hands be taken out their minds. I declare that their bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I declare that they will preach, they will teach, they will be men and women of God. They will live on their purpose at a such a time as this. We look in the Bible, we look at Samson, we look at David, we look at Esther, oh God, Elizabeth, Mary, that you use God to, to, to bring the Savior into the world. Can you find such a one in our midst this morning? Young people, children, God is calling you to live for him. Be that change. Be that one that stands out. Be that one that makes a difference. Be that one that when they laugh at you and cheer you, you know who is fighting for you. God is on your side. And you are not alone. This morning, Spirit of the living God, I pray for our children. Oh God, release them from the bondage of the enemies. Oh God, use them for your glory. In the name of Jesus. This morning, God, I pray, God, that they will have an appetite for the word. I pray, God, that they will study your word. I pray, God, that they will use your word in season and out of season. Lord, I pray for those who have not given their lives to you, that they will do so before it's too late. In the name of Jesus. Those who would have given their lives to you and are playing this morning, Spirit of the living God, I pray, God, that they will be serious about their salvation. I pray, God, that they will spend time to get to know you. I pray for their parents, those who are not yet Christians. I pray, God, that you will save them so the children of God Almighty will see an example in the home that they can pattern or that they can model. Jesus, children live what they learn. And this morning, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that God will save the parents. Oh, God, I pray, God, in the homes, God, the altar for, the, for, for you, God, an altar will be in the home. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that things will never be the same. I pray, God Almighty, that you will destroy every yoke of bondage from over the parents this morning. And parents who are Christians, I pray, God, that there will be fearless in their homes. I pray that they will be bold. Lord, when they were babies, they took the children to the altar. And the pastor, whoever that pastor was, prayed over their child and children. Now they are adults. They are no longer desiring the things of God. I pray that the parents will fight for their children. I pray, God, that they will never give up, no matter how old these children are, in the name of Jesus. They will continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray for their child and children. And so, God, this morning, hear our cry. Hear our prayers for the children, God. Oh, God, I plead your blood over their minds. That their minds will become focused again on the things that matters in the name of Jesus. The things that matters. Social media has its place, but it should not take first place in their lives. Oh God. And so God, this morning, Spirit of the living God, I pray, God, help us here at church 
to continue to do our part, to continue to sow seeds of righteousness, to continue to love them, to continue to show care for them. Some of them may have had a, 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 a terrible week, and here they are at church. God, I pray that their heart should be open to your word today. As the word goes for God, we know that it will not return void and that it will accomplish all that you have desired it to be. It will be a fruit in their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, help them to see that we love them and we care for them. And God, when the enemy um, sow seeds of lies, why Sister Heather is coming at me like that? Why Sister Janice is telling me to be quiet? Why Sister Markisha is telling me to sit and don't go to the bathroom so often? Why Brother Jeremy is saying, boys, be quiet. It's because we love. Because Jesus first love. We are teaching you how to, 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 to listen to God in the sanctuary. This is not like the normal out of door. This is inside God's house. Where it's children and we are called by his name. We must learn how to behave ourselves. And so God, this morning, breathe afresh. Holy Spirit, send a fresh wind in this place. As your man servant stand to speak. I know God, your word is already anointed. And I know that it is anointed. So as he, as he stand to speak, the word will come with power and clarity. And so, God, I thank you for your people who are here this morning. Yes. God, we can get a church, or play in church. We want to leave church. Yes. We are the church. We are called to be separated. Yes. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your grace. We worship you and glory. Reverend, wave your hand in the atmosphere and give God the glory. Give God the glory for what he has already done and will do for on behalf of his children. He said, suffer the little children and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. And those who hurt the children because when they put a stone on a string and drown themselves for God sees and God knows what has been done to children. Have thine way, O oh God, you know, in our midst. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
taken from Second Peter chapter 3, please stand on your phone. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens of the water, no, the heavens were old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the earth that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. But be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning, concerning his promise, as some men call slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that, but that should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away, with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with firm, fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing, that, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what matter of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and has I hasten unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, looking for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of peace in found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the strong suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable, repressed, as they do also the other scripture, scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye, knowing these things before, the way lift less ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, falling from their own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him to be glory both now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. It says, grow in grace. Do you see that in your Bibles? and in the knowledge of our Lord 
Somebody say Lord. Lord. And Savior. Somebody say Savior. Savior. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I feel like it's in that again. Grow in grace. Hallelujah. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory. Both now. Somebody said no. Amen. And forever. Amen. Amen. Grow in grace. Grow in grace. I'm going to talk to you about the tense that is written in the Greek. But in effect, what it means is that that is a command. It's not a request. It's a command, one, and two, this is not something that passively happens to you. You need to take action. It's in the active voice. All right, so it's a command, it's in the imperative, but it's also active, which means you and I have to take action. And the word for growth used in the text is oxan, A-U-X-A-N-O, it's a Greek word, and it means become greater in size or maturity. Oxan is key to authentic discipleship. Indeed, the Lord requires non-stop progress in the life of it. Do we hear that? The Lord requires non-stop progress. I don't know about you. Sometimes I feel like I've reached a plateau. You know what that is? That is a place often in the mountains. You have these hills and these mountains. You go in, in the Andes, over the east there. You have one in, in, in Tibet. It's a famous one. So you have climbed a lot of mountains before. But somewhere there, one of these have a little flat surface at the top. That's a plateau. We get flat in our lives. We're not going up anymore. We're not scaling heights. I don't know about you. You don't have to be honest. Don't talk to anybody here. Man. Let me talk to myself up here. I need to grow. I'm talking to anybody. See, I can see Brother Marlon is talking to you. Let me talk to myself. I need to grow. Let me tell you a little story, version. When I was When I was growing up, there was a little door in our home. And it had these little markings on it that we as children used to use to track our growth. Often I would personally try to see if I can somehow know when growth is happening. <laughs> but it never, never worked. Out. All would happen personally, I would end up just going to bed. And when I woke up and I went against the door, all of a sudden I could reach a new mark. And I didn't have anything to do with it. I just went to sleep. Or maybe that's not how I found out. And my friends and I tried to pick mango or guinea or something of the sort. And we jumped. We said, wow, we can reach it. Or, or maybe basketball would be realized we're getting closer to the elusive dunk that all of us are after. Trying to dunk. Another story for you. I discovered my voice had changed as a teenager while I was on the football field one Sunday. I was just talking about my business, waiting for my turn, pit side to go on with my team. And I was just chatting like everybody else. And here's an older man. Wait, who's we'll talking like man? <laughs> At first, I didn't realize what I was doing on because I didn't realize anything had changed about me. Sometimes, Church of God, it takes somebody external to us to highlight the need for change, but also change itself. The need for change because we need to progress. And that can be a coach, a teacher, a mentor, a discipler. The need for change, but also the, 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 the experience or the understanding that change has taken place. So in other words, you're not where you were, but you're not where you need to be either. You're in a position of transition. And so when we look in this text, Peter is helping us to understand our need for growth. But he also highlights to the brethren that indeed you are growing in some years. Because guess what? You see, if I just highlight your need for growth, and I don't tell you that you are growing, 
you might get discouraged and quit. Because you think nothing, and sometimes that's an assault of the enemy. Yes, to say to the leavers, you don't realize your life is not going anywhere. Look at all the people who graduated at the same time you did. They have achieved. Look at that brethren. Look at that person you know who is maybe somebody who don't care about God at all. They have just bought a second home. You're not making any progress. Nothing is going on in your life. Because if growth is just measured in terms of numbers, addition, then that's the only kind of growth you look at. But there's another kind of growth that we're going to look at. I want to talk about growth in a spiritual sense. We all understand biological growth, church of God. Some of us understand mental and intellectual growth. But where some of us may struggle is if we are asked to describe spiritual or better yet, Christian growth. I do want to say spiritual. Because there are people these days who will say they are spiritual, but they don't have anything to do with God. Amen. Christian growth. And the problem with that is, Virgin, if we are unable to identify what constitutes growth, it might be difficult for us to pursue it. If you don't know what you're aiming for, what are you going to get there? It's literally what I'm saying. Also, we might believe others are growing when they are not. Because we identify the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah. And we point to certain things. And we say, wow, that person is so much. No, they are not. Because we have the wrong markers for growth. And so it's important that we understand these things. Because of these, we don't want to deceive ourselves. Let me say that first. About our progress. That is our growth, our development, our progress. Because of our experience in church, our experiences with biological and physiological phenomena, that is what we notice with our senses. We might be forgiven if we think growth in our lives as Christians is automatic. We might start to believe, because that's what we see around us now. I go to bed, I wake up, and I can reach a new mark. I don't do anything. We might be forgiven the thing. That's how our faith works as well. Yes. That we have no contribution. That we are saved by grace mm -hmm. through faith. Yep. Not of ourselves. Right. I can't boast. Mm -hmm. And we have this story right here. Yes. And we conflate effort with works. Grace is not opposed to effort. Right. Hello? Not all effort is properly considered works. And by works, I mean works of the law. Let me make that clear. There is effort. Paul says he labored in prayer. It's prayer. And he says he labored. Some of us don't want to labor in prayer. We don't even want to fight the sleep. That will invariably come on us. We don't want to fight the distraction that will come at us when we want to listen to the word. Sometimes I turn on my audio Bible. That's the mighty God. I'm not processing anything. The God will come chapters. I'm not processing anything. So what should I do? Turn it off and quit? No, I start it over. I start it over. I said, God, help me. I feel dry. This is not my communion with you. This is not how I'm supposed to be relating to you. Where is my sensitivity to your word? We have to labor. We have to grow everything. So as I look at this text, there are these four things I want us to pay attention to if we are going to grow. Number one, we want to pay attention to the promises of God. Yes. We must pay attention to the promises of God. 
Listen, listen, listen. This is what Peter says. I'm going all the way to chapter 1 because Peter is dealing with the subject of growth all the way through the three chapters. In chapter 1, he says it this way. His divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I'm at chapter 1, verse 3. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Whereby he had given unto us exceeding great and precious, somebody said precious, precious. promises. Because I said I'm not going to preach long. That's the word. If we are going to grow, we must pay attention to God's promises. Yes. Now what does that accomplish for us? I want to give us at least two things that it accomplishes for us. It accomplishes exit from some corruption that is in the world. It gives us a way out of some pollution that is in the world. How can you navigate this world and remain pure? By holding on to the promises of God. Look at chapter 1 verse 4. We have already given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped. Somebody say escaped. escaped. The corruption in the world through lust or desire. How do we live in this world? How do we grow in God in this world? We take the promises of God that tell us who we really are in God. So that when our flesh creating problems, you can sing, I know who he says. I am. I am. I am. I am. Who he says I am. We take the promises of God. On the days when we feel discouraged and say, God has started a good work in me. He will bring it to completion. When the enemy wants us to feel unclean, we can draw for the promise that says we are washed by the word. We are sanctified to the truth of Jesus. All of us have a past. Whatever your past is. And it is the work of the enemy to audit your past. And to, 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 to convert it into present. The Lord has declared that we should reckon ourselves dead to sin. That man, that woman... That boy, that girl, the enemy is bringing before you. God says, the promise of God says, consider that person dead. You can write an obituary. Oh God. Write an obituary on the mess. Write an obituary on the lower self-esteem. I'm confident your thankfulness will see me through. I write an obituary over unforgiveness. Even when I see the person, I feel I'm not there yet. God tells me if I confess it, if I really believe it, even if my body don't get in line yet, God's promise is true. Pay attention to the promises of God because they are doorways out of corruption. Doorways out of pollution, that is chapter 2, verse 20. For if after they have escaped, you see that word again? The pollutions of the world. We can see it. That's how we pay attention to the promises of God. Now, in this text, Peter says, we must also... Pay attention to the words of the prophets. Amen? We must look at the prophetic word. Now I want to summarize that whole section for you. Let's go back to chapter 3 now. Peter says, I want to stir up your pure minds. Verse 1. By the way of remembrance. 
that ye be mindful of the words, verse 2, spoken by the holy prophets, and of the commandment, pay attention to this part, of us, the apostles. St. Peter's day, he said to them, pay attention to the prophets of what we call Old Testament, yes. but also the words of the apostles. That's Peter, that's Paul, that's the brother there. Jude, etc. And the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Why should we pay attention not only to the promises, but to the prophecies? First of all, let's, let's deal with it in two ways. The first set of prophecies, Brother Neil, dealt with the first coming of Messiah. The prophets were constantly saying, we had David, as great a king as he was, and we can't see them best. He messed up. We had Solomon and God gave him wisdom to leave. He messed up. So in other words, no king really reflected the kind of kingship I want. We had Moses, the great man of God, the prophet. One scripture calls him powerful before God. He messed up. So scripture says you want to tell you are not a prophet like Moses. Then we look at the priesthood. We realize when we come to a man like Eli and his children, the priesthood mess up. Yes. So all the offices of leadership God had set up for his children messed up. Mankind messed it up. So God needed to find a solution. I love that my God is a mathematician. He always has a solution to the problem. He's always gathering data and paying attention to the trends so that he can make recommendations and strategic changes in his organization that is the kingdom. And so at a time appointed in a place some people did not like. Come on. Here comes a little baby. Yes. Hello, do not despise. Listen, listen, listen. A poor people house. God found you. Watch out, watch out for prejudice. Come on. Hear the church of God. God bless you. Go right ahead. Yes. Go right ahead. Receive everything the Lord gives you. But be aware of prejudice. It's a, it's a local, it's a low place. It's a place that maybe for when you say, God is in here. It's crazy. No way. I don't, can't believe God is here. Look at the clothing. Look at the dirt under the nails. God could never be working here. But the love of God operates. God says, I don't look at the things you look at. Amen. God has another free work yes. for looking at the word. Yes. And so help us, Jesus. If we're gonna grow when we look at the prophet, to remove listen, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the time my wife has to go to the ophthalmologist, I think they are God. So let me get help me out. But the glasses, the lens need to be changed. Hello, the glasses are still on the face. Yes. Hallelujah, we're still seeing. But something is going on with the lens. Yeah. Mighty God, I'll let me use a car. Because I have more clarity with that one. Sometimes it starts to rain on the highway and the visibility is difficult. And you turn on the wipeout at maximum speed. But the only thing going on there, visibility becoming poorer and poorer and poorer. What do you have to do? You have to pull off the wiper sometimes and clean the dirt. Yes, yes, yes. For clear vision. Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. God has to clear the dirt. Of our prejudice, sorry. God has to clear the dirt of our pride if we're going to grow. When we look at the prophecies, God has to clear the dirt of pride for the scribes and the Pharisees. For He says, You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Yet here is eternal life right in front of you, and you can't recognize it. Here is God. Oh, the real prophet, the perfect prophet. Here is God, the king that is greater than David. Here is Jesus, the priest from the order of Melchizedek. Yes. That has come, but you can't see him. You could not recognize what the prophets were saying. 
for God to grow in God, we have to pay attention to the prophets. And we have to pay attention to the word of the apostles. In other words, what scripture says, they speak with one mouth. What does that mean? They are all saying the same thing. One said was saying Messiah was going to come this time. The other said he said Messiah is coming back. God is going to reveal this world. And so why is that important? We need a big picture perspective. Let's look at our text and see why. Because some people will pop up in the last days. Now these are key terms in scripture. So. <laughs> right? I can't even unpack all of that. Just understand we need. <laughs> That's it. So I need to do. We are in here. And here are the scoffers, the mockers, yes. the jeers. Yes. From the barn years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Ever heard that show? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to live any way I want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, you know. My grandmother did, my great grandfather did. Listen, nothing that changed. Look how much wicked people in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Tell me just to go more and live. Mm-hmm. Now it's bad enough when people like stirred out to the kingdom of God. Say that. But Peter is here dealing with some people who are in the church like you and I. Who yeah. start to say these things. Yeah. Or maybe some of us don't verbalize it, you know. Maybe we wouldn't be so cool if we wanted to build a membership. I actually like the societal value of belonging to a church. So I don't want them to put me out. So I won't verbalize that I believe this. But functionally in my everyday life, I don't pray as I ought. I don't pursue the kingdom of God as I ought. Because I genuinely believe, you know what? Maybe this Christianity is just good for me over here. But there's nothing else. So we need the prophecies. We need the word of the apostles to keep the big picture in mind. Don't fool yourself. God's word is sure. Yes. Amen. I can't tell you when he's going to return. On some days I'm happy he didn't. Yes. Oh, yes. Huh? Oh, yes. Come on. I can't tell you, but, but we need a big picture. Because Peter says these people who are saying these things? What do they do? They are short-sighted. Literally, the, the, the Greek says it's as if they, they blink. You know? Blink. They just blink. That's how they think about reality. But God, we have to play the long game. Amen? I love me some football from time to time. My wife, maybe, I bit I know I didn't make because I lose a match and my whole mood go down. <laughs> <laughs> but then I remember the season is long. When I have a long game, I can't go back to reality. That the season is not over. Hello, church. Today might be a bad day. Yes. You may have a bad week where you were not in tune with what God wanted to be last week. But it's not over. Oh, Jesus. God's season is long. I love the scripture that encourages me every day. His compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. I've got a reset button. When I leave the promises of God, he that was and is and is to come, he takes care of all the areas of my life. And he has, oh mighty God, he doesn't have forgiveness for my past sins. He has forgiveness available for my present sins. And he has forgiveness available for my future sins. Because he's not just dealing with me when I was saved. Be in the past tense. But he tells me I am being saved. Let me move on, let me move on. I can't preach all day, I can't preach all day. We're going to grow. We pay attention to the promises of God. We pay attention to the prophecies and the words of the apostles. But we must also pay attention, church of God, to the patience of God. I said as a church, we need to grow as disciples, but also as disciple makers. 
the holders of this particular point. Help us with that. The wicked are saying, God is not coming back. Because look at all the wickedness taking place and people dying and those in fulfillment of promises. We as believers cannot have that perspective. What we need to see. Let me read that verse. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one day. One day is with the Lord. Verse 8. As a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men come slackness, but is long suffering. What's that? That's patient to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, when the people, thank you very much for that, God. Yes, living water and man-made water, water. Yes. <laughs> everything in one of you. Right? Long suffering. God is patient. God is patient. And therefore we exercise patience. Yes? And deal with some patience. We just having some fun. <laughs> right? That's all. Um God is patient should energize us who are disciple makers because evangelism is quick but God said make disciples that's a slower process we're going to have some bridging sometime the expletives used to cover a full essay but the Lord cut them down and it's just two paragraphs now. and they go a long time I will never hear any. And one day, because we, are, we over expedite our progress sometimes. Yes. We think we are much further along in the sanctification journey that we are. Until something really happens. Just yesterday, we saw Reverend I heading down to Clarendon. And on the going down part of the highway, here's a vehicle coming up. So, Reverend right, you're quite right. So we are in shock, like. Did we see what we just saw? Thankfully, we're on the left lane. A vehicle passed us on the right. I had to swing from the city to come. Oh, my I say that as a alerting us. Crazy things are happening. But also, situation like that could take a believer. Mm -hmm. They're not unsafe. Mm -hmm. And what come out of the mood? Even them frightened. <laughs> <laughs> And the rest of us here is what he's doing. not saved. So and so is not saved. We need to pray. And we don't remember ourselves that we tried to pay a bill on another day. Something like that may not come from our mouths. But we tried to pay a bill another day. And listen, we are so broke. We are miserable. Somebody say good morning. Listen. Don't talk to me. I need to get out of here. You people. So we have different battles we are fighting. So we are all in the sanctification journey. And therefore we need to understand God's patience with us. And also, we when we are making disciples, when one of our disciples come and they follow, do not be in condemnation first. So okay. This happened. How can we progress from here? How can we get to? Because one of the tactics of the enemy is to bring condemnation. Yeah, what yes. somebody who says. God will convict you as a believer, but you will not condemn him. Right. Because you are a child. He needs to alert you that you did something wrong. Yes, That's is. not in alignment to the principles of his house. Yeah. We don't behave that way in this house. That's what God is saying by his conviction. And the work of the Holy Spirit. So what do we do? We come into alignment. Yes. You don't need to waste any time punishing yourself. Right. In the Latin American world, they have something called Dolerismo, where the people are in a big parade and they're beating themselves with whips and all sorts of business. Don't metaphorically beat yourself up. 
confess your sins. Move along. Your father is waiting. Can I preach to somebody? Too many of us spend a long time in the far country where we have wasted our substance, where we are longing for the big food, where our father is waiting with open arms, wanting us to come home. Come home! You are weary! Come home. Draw near to God. This is why you have to believe the promises. Yes. And the promises. Yes. Because you have to confront and overcome lies yes. of the enemy. Yes. Lies of condemnation. Yes. <laughs> lies about God not coming back. Mm. And God is very faithful. We have the promises. We have the prophecies. We have the patience of God in our sanctification process, in our discipling process, but also to proclaim the truth, to say to somebody, God is still patient with you. All the things that you've been doing in your life, all the rebellion against God. If you seek the Lord today, you can find Him. Today is the day of salvation. So let us not lose heart. We've been praying for God to cut the hearts of some of our family members. Huh? We've been praying for God to turn them from the power of Satan to God. Keep praying. Because God is patient. We must remember the patience of God. Now hear me, Virgin. This is interesting, you know, because typically when we hear these words, some of us write really good notes. But as we exit this door, it is testing. Yes. And we don't know where we're putting it. <laughs> so we have to be very careful. Which is my final point. The purity of my final point. I made this one quick. Purity of our lives. Let's look at our text. These false features. Because things are connected. If I think God's word is not true. If I think the prophecies are not being fulfilled, then really and truly, all my hope is in this life. And I will live like everybody else lives over here. And there are implications for that. Impurity, uncleanness, twisting the scriptures. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? The word conversation here does not mean talk, it means life. What persons are you to be in terms of a holy life and godliness? For conversation is part of our life, don't it? Right. So even though the word doesn't mean conversation in that sense, our conversation is part of our life. And therefore it's subsumed in that. We must pay attention to the prophetic words, to the promises of God, to the patience of God, but we must also pay attention to the purity of our lives. Paul says in Romans, present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable, the logical end, your act of worship. God, can I go back to Eli and his sons for a second? They, when the people brought the sacrifices into the house of God, they bothered the people them. This peace that they're giving to God, give it to us. Take it out. When the woman came to the temple, they said, come with me. They said, this is the place of worship. And so, God, can I bring it back to our message for a second? There was impurity at the house of God in that day. Yes. And therefore, they went into a battle with the Philistines. Yes. What are the Philistines? Let me give you one application. The Philistines are people who made iron weapons. That was the technology of the day. 
So this is an attack via technology. Oh, you never thought about that before. I'm bringing some applications to you. Philistines dealt with tech. And some of us can be attacked with tech. The technologies that we are caught up with cause us to be distracted from it. This I love tech. So I can tell you there are pitfalls. I told you I love my football and watching. The other day I said that I don't want to reclaim some of my time. <laughs> so some of the channels I watch where they are analyzing the match down to the last detail. I start to tell you too, not interesting. <laughs> and take that time to do something else to help my growth in God. <laughs> not because necessarily watching a sport is wrong, but I need to get a handle on myself to yeah, take so. with the invasion of the Philistines. Hey. But they were losing the battle. Because there was impurity at the house of God. Under that, under that, under that. Let me refresh myself a second. Impurity at the house of God. Because of this impurity, the battle went on and they lost the battle. And guess what? The ark of the covenant of God that signaled God's, God's rule signal God's presence oh my God I'm coming up with a point here are you ready has the enemy robbed the presence of God out of your life because of a Philistine invasion has the enemy robbed the rule of God out of your life because of an invasion an attack on your mind remember the woman of God drove a ten peg through the head of Sisera, yes, yes. the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Attack on the mind. Yes. Attack via technology. When you see the Philistines, consider these things. It's not just some Asian people. They were real people like that. But God didn't write it for us to just have a historical lesson. We need to see what is taking. We are the Philistines in our time. And I'm saying to you, an attack on the mind, on the thoughts. And where we occupy our minds with. Is it the promises of God? It's the prophecies of God? Is it the patience of God? Impurity in our lives will allow the enemy to rob the rule of God. Yes. The presence of God. And what do we end up with? Ichabod. What does that mean? The glory has departed. Has the glory departed from your life? Hello? Has the glory departed from your life because of impurity? Because of your thought life? Because of what you're doing with your body? We need promises of God, prophetic words, patience of God, the purity of our lives. And the final one should not be done. I said it already and I'm concluding it. We must pursue growth. Growth is not going to land on the top of your head. You must be intentional in seeking growth. It says grow in grace. I told you. It's in the imperative. It's a command to us as believers. Anything that is important. All they said is we set financial goals. We set career goals. Huh? We set some goals in the family. But when it comes to our spiritual life, we don't have any goals. We just post it along. And we think, oh, you're all going to work out. Really? You coast and you coast to the north coast and west coast, west, west, west coast and dream weekend and all these nonsense. Hmm? Because you're not focused. You're not intentional about building your faith. About how you use your time. About what, what, what resources, what games you're playing, what music you're listening to, what conversation you're having with your friends. Young people, it's not just for you, it's all of us. It's not only young people play games. There's a big gaming culture. Where's the adults buying and playing the games more than the children? Yes. And, and right now we have a challenge because some young men who should be marrying wives and building a family, they zone out from that game. And they zone out with device yes. and the real purpose. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be shutting down. But after this one day, 
one believer about perceiving good. In chapter 1, Peter says, verse 5, giving all diligence, he says, add to your faith virtue. Virtue and to virtue knowledge. Not just any knowledge. But then we talk about the wisdom of God personified in Jesus. We need the knowledge of Jesus. And here's the situation with the knowledge of Jesus. I have to be careful in how I use the word off. Because we can know about him, but we don't know him. Any historian word is thought can write about Jesus. Because he was a real historical figure. People, Peter says in chapter 1, we didn't, we didn't give you cleverly devised fables. We didn't make it up. This is a reality. God was here in the flesh. So you can be confident in your fear. That's the first part of that verse. But it also says virtue. What is that? That means moral excellence. That means something or someone fulfilling purpose. Hello? If a hammer does what it is supposed to do, we say it is excellent. The car is made to drive. So when you drive and drive well, this car is excellent. So we as the people of God, we young people who got called to serve him, if you fulfill purpose, where without shall a young man cleanse his will, taking heed to the word of God, Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And from this wisdom flows this knowledge of how to live. So we don't just want to be skilled with our hands. I like the builders. Brother Neil is a, is a, is a genius. Yes. We like the builders with the hands. But we want some people build lives. Yes. Come on. Build families. Come on. Yes. Build strong fear. Build a strong prior life. Build strong integrity. Come on. When you're in a company and the policies say one thing and somebody brings something for you to approve that is against it, for you to stand your ground in courage Come and on. integrity and say, no, this is not happening. And to be fearless about it because God on, is for me. God is promises. Mm. And let me tell you, let me bring it clear to us. Because we have the prophecies as well. And we know when it sounds that Daniel saw the stone rolling down to Babylon. God's kingdom wins. Let me make it plain to us. Even if we stand our ground for truth and the faith and righteousness, and God will permit the wicked to get rid of us from this fears, we have not lost anything. Come on, Lord. Come on. Paul says to live. Is Christ and to die is even better. But for your sake, right now I'm going to stay around. As I close, Peter wrote these words at the end of his life. He says, God has showed me in chapter 1, he said, I'm going to die soon. So Peter had the time to say, Boy, well, listen, is Jesus doing his foolishness? I am going to die now. It don't make any sense. I give this at my chest. That's not what he said. He said to us, continue to grow in grace and in your intimacy with Jesus. Yes. On my way out of here, these are my last words. It's time to grow. Grow in God. Grow in grace. Grow in the knowledge of who Jesus is. As you practice his word, as you practice and you assimilate and appropriate the promises of God in your life. You will know Jesus more and more. As you slow down and draw near to him and wait on him, that's when you actually speak up in your growth. God be praised. May we, as a people of God, grow in appropriating the promises to our lives. In reflecting on the prophetic words of scripture and the apostles. 
May we be impacted by the patience of God. And may our lives be pure as we pursue growth. In Jesus' name. Amen.
today, this morning, mighty God, as you have spoken to your man servant, reemphasizing and reminding and pointing us to the direction in which you want us to go individually and collectively. We are thanking you for the emphasis that has been placed on growth, growing in the Lord, growing in areas and understanding God's promises, growing in understanding the path of the prophet taking utterances, where we have your words as a testimony of your declaration to us who you are and what we are about and how you are asking us to pay attention as you work in us individually and advance the kingdom collectively. We thank you that you have reminded us about the area of purity, that we should be holy and separate and be blameless and walk in love. And we are thanking you for climaxing and summarizing the fact of growth, moving from infancy to maturity. We thank you for all these areas that the Holy Spirit you have pointed out and reminded us about. I know it's about time, Holy Spirit, to make that intentional decision. Decision volitionally and intentionally. The hearts, Holy Spirit, that you are pointing to. My heart, our heart. Different areas that of weaknesses. In different areas that we are hiding away from you. Expose it right now. Yes. So that there could be that kind of a Holy Spirit divine intervention. Yes. In terms of illumination and transformation. Yes. Let it happen Holy Spirit. We do not just want to be hearers of the word. We want to be doers. We want to be actively engaged in growing up in the Lord. To advance in your kingdom. Yes. The challenge, you have challenged us at least to take one, prayerfully take one person and be thinking about how we can invest spiritually in that individual. How much we pray that we'll take these admonitions and exhortations seriously. These, some of these are not optional, they are imperative. They are command that you are asking us to. We are not going to move ahead. We are not going to make any gains. We are not going to be progressive if we remain, Lord God, in stagnation. Move us, Lord, from our comfort zone so that we can be that light and salt and positively affect change. So we thank you for how you have spoken to us. We thank you for how you, are, you have illuminated and proportionally divide each each, 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 what you have to say to each person. And we thank you for all the transformation that you are going to take place now, Holy Spirit. As we dismiss this service, we ask that your, your precious Lord Jesus, that you dismiss us with your choicest blessings. And we thank you that we have come and we are very grateful for what you have done in our midst. Our more young people's service today. We thank you for our young people, how you are going to help them to grow in the Lord and the admonition of the Lord. We thank you for how you are going to make them flourishing in terms of this week and beyond. We thank you for the adults that have been training. We thank you for the guardians that you have set up in each life. Oh God, may you cause us to move from strength to strength. And we ask that you destroy the plans of the enemy. From this day henceforth, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen.